Alright, so as promised, I got y'all with the video of why I've been talking about what I've been talking about on my Instagram for the past two, three days, and why prep is no longer a thing. So I guess we'll take it back to Friday. Um, so nine weeks out from the show, um, throwing in clenbuterol, a fat burn. I want to accelerate fat loss. Usually, uh, the vast majority of the time, people take the, the tablet form of clean. Uh, I ended up getting shipped the liquid form. I don't know why. Ordered the tablets. That's not what I got. Uh, I guess the conversion from microgram to milligram, I hope I'm accurate in saying that, is like really hard to do correctly. I ended up taking way, way more than I was supposed to. Obviously, accidentally. Um, so, kind of what happened was we were both getting ready for work. She was in the bathroom. I was, you know, just doing my thing in the kitchen, you know, getting my meals ready. Uh, I, you know, did my, took the clean, um, dropped it in my mouth. A lot of drops went in there. I think, I think only one or two drops was going in. It was more like 10 or 12. Um, that sounds horrible saying it out loud. But basically getting ready and like 10 minutes later, I just, I don't know, where just starting hearing my feeling, my heart thumping like thumping hard um i'm you know whipping food up i can't concentrate on anything i'm running back and forth from the kitchen to the bathroom where she's getting ready just like like freaking out to her and like you were saying like that we should call an ambulance and stuff or like take it more serious than i was thinking and looking back that probably could have saved me the issues that i'm dealing with now me being not wanting to go in the hospital over some silly shit, not wanting to just like overreact, you know, because this deep, an elevated heart rate, shakiness, which is what I was experiencing too, is something that I just knew was a side effect of Clint. I never had taken it before in my life, so I'm like, it feels intense, but then again, I'm like, okay, this is normal. So, uh, yeah, like, how is that for you? Like, just like, first few minutes of when before we left the curve. Well, you asked people and they said it was normal, but it didn't seem normal. It was, it was just like more intense than what it seemed like it should have been. But, you know, I had this in-person client training session I was going to, so I wasn't going to flake on him. It was, it was our first one, so I head out the door. She didn't want me to go. She didn't want me to drive. I shouldn't have, but, you know. Um, I go there, you know, I'm, I'm apologizing to this dude multiple times because it's like, I keep telling him, man, I'm not usually like this, but like, I'm just feeling so much like shit. That like, I'm literally sitting down, I'm barely speaking. And keep in mind, this is a training, this is a personal training session. I should be coaching him through shit. I should be interactive. I'm being none of those things. Um, so I, you know, get through that, push my way through it. Um, like, try to get it over with fast. And I actually have to go to work. And I'm the only dude at work. Uh, like it's just, just I'm the only person working you know that's there's not multiple employees at a time um, I'm there for what like 45 minutes an hour and it's nothing's getting better I'm my heart is if anything beating harder um, and I mean hard like we we literally could I think it was when I opened my mouth or something I was like this or something and we could literally both of us could hear my heart do you understand how hard your heart has to be beating for somebody to hear your heartbeat? Somebody that's not you. Um, but I'm at work. I am struggling to do anything. I threw up seven or eight times within the 45 minutes I was in there. I was like, I, I, one time I, I, mit, I didn't make it to the toilet. I had to carry this trash can around with me. I'm sure it looked fried on the footage, the, the video camera footage. Um, I had people coming up to the door because it was like 30 minutes past time we were supposed to open. I couldn't even make it past opening up the register, getting like the basic shit ready for the day to start because I'm literally like unfunctional. Um, you know, so with a, after a lot of negotiating and debating with myself, I just like, you know, call my or send my boss a voice memo and I'm like, bro, like, I'm sorry, but I physically can't be here. Um, I head home. I sit my ass right on this couch over here. I just try to be calm. Nothing like that occurred. Uh, my 
stomach was still on 10. I ended up, you know, I felt like I had to throw up, so I like started running the bathroom, did not make it, threw up all over the living room right there. And then, you know, that's when, that's when I was like, okay, this is not, like, I have to go to the doctor. Um, basically, I called Mariah. She was at work. Um, and I was like, um, almost crying. Like, like, I was like whining and shit. Like, I was in pain. Like, my head was pounding. My vision was fuzzy. My hearing was really muffled. My heart was, literally, I can't even describe how hard it was pounding. It was like, it was, it was insane. Um, so, wait, why did I end up driving myself? I ended up driving myself to the, to the ER originally. I don't remember why though. We just, could you not leave the name out of time? Oh yeah, no, cause you said you didn't want, you would, they would get mad at you or something. Yeah, but I'm still saying I would go. Yeah, she was, she was trying to help, but like, I, you know, I don't, this is, I have this thing where like, I don't want people to be, by my shit, my dumb shit. So basically I was like, just stay at work. I drove, still not knowing that this was gonna be anywhere near as serious as it was. I drove my ass to the ER. Uh, I tell them my symptoms, shortness of breath. I walked in saying I had heart palpitations, which I don't you know. You drove if that, to urgent care. I drove to the urgent care, yeah. I don't know if it was technically heart palpitations. Is that, like, okay, so yeah. But basically they started, they asked me if I had been thrown up. I said the amount of times I had, and they were like, they, they, they wasted no time, which I've never experienced that in an ER or like anything like they took me back immediately. When I got back there, I kind of realized it was more serious. Um, you know, there were three nurses in there with me. They were just like, they wouldn't leave me alone. Like as in like they wouldn't leave me in the room by myself or like unsupported. Um, and they were telling me that this like, this is serious. My heart rate was extremely high. I think it was at that point, it was like in the, 60s, 170s maybe, um, and it was just, I was, I felt so horrible, like, I couldn't open my eyes, I was just like shaking and just trying to stay calm, trying not to throw up, they had the like little vomit bag, like, for me to hold, and I, yeah, um, basically, they told me, dude, you need to go to the hospital down the road, we can't handle you, but this is serious, you can't just ignore this, um, so, she was able to leave work once I told her, like, this, okay, this is serious. They would not let me drive myself. They wanted to call an ambulance, but that nigga was not trying to <laughs> forego that financially. Um, maybe I should have. Looking back, you know, I sat in a fucking hospital uh, waiting, waiting room for two hours, hour and 45 minutes, two hours, which, like, looking back now, like, the amount of time that I sat around, like a total of probably five or six hours without like having anything accomplished to like start getting better or figure out what the hell, what the fuck was going on. Like I might not have the damage to my heart that I have right now, um, but I'll get into that more like what specifically they said is wrong. But um, so she comes and gets me on the way, like while she's coming and get me, I or on her way to like driving to me they have me sitting outside in a wheelchair <laughs> and i got this vomit bag and i just like i i was throwing up so violently and so hard that like the day after so saturday my whole body hurt bad like especially my neck muscles were i remember saturday just waking up and like like tears coming to my eyes because my neck hurt so bad. My back was cramping, like I was so dehydrated. Um, but yeah, so she takes me to the, the ER. She she has to go back to work, so, or the, the hospital from the ER, right? Are these the right words? So you're at urgent care. Urgent care, is that not the same as the ER? No. Oh, okay, so she takes urgent me. Urgent care is just like immediate care, but they don't have the equipment that the ER does. Okay, yeah, so that's why I had to go to the ER from urgent care. So I sit in the ER waiting room for like an hour and 45 to two hours. Um, it's just uncomfortable. I could tell I was making everybody around me uncomfortable. I'm literally, for the amount of time I was sitting in that chair, I promise I didn't sit still for more than 10 seconds. Like I, I was shaking, I had to keep moving. My heart was 
thumping. I, I was nauseous, like I had chills, um, all types of shit. Felt horrible, literally could have died in there. Like I was, that, that's when I was wishing, okay, I should have took the ambulance. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't connect it to in my head that if I don't take this ambulance, I'm waiting in a fucking waiting room. There were probably 20 other people in there and they were like, they were giving me the side eye and shit. Or the, the side eye, yeah, the side eye, like looking at me crazy. Like, cause everybody else in there, you know, I don't know. People probably were dealing with some serious shit, but I feel like mine was particularly like of urgency. Um, so they call me back and that's when things like really were like, okay, this is serious. So yeah, I'm in, remember. no, so this, this is why she's here. Um, <laughs> I need, I need her to fill me in. Cause they started giving me like drugs and shit that like they said, I, it was a benzodiazepine. I, don't, I think that's a like benzodiazepine, whatever, a benzo. So I'll, in the Xanax family is from what I know, I hope I'm not giving spewing bullshit, but similar to Xanax so to drop my heart rate and you know kind of just like calm my ass like down responding yeah so no ex explain them this to them because I don't remember this part no, you got it. You didn't I literally don't remember this part no I need you to like tell them <laughs> what <laughs> what are you here for <laughs> no. <laughs> no okay so okay so fill me on the details um I Bed. My mom. Well, you were there for quite a while until I was able to get there when I got off work. Um, so I had to finish my shift. Um, I mean, I know I was I was in the room for two hours. So I. Yeah. Like so hour. you were in the room for two hours without me, all by yourself. Okay. So it is. And when I got there, you were out of it. So. Like, like looping and shit. Um, like you were happy to see me, but like you weren't yourself. Okay. Yeah, I don't Your remember. Your heart rate was in the 150s, and 170s, and, and then this is me just laying there, obviously. Like I'm just in the laying there in the hospital bed. Um, and from what I remember from being in this first room, it's just multiple nurses being in there, the doctor coming in and just talking to me about what I took. He wasn't, I don't, he wasn't familiar with it at first, right? No, they had to look it up. So yeah, they, no, nobody really knew. What this was and if they knew, didn't know what it was they didn't know shit about it um, even the pharmacist didn't yeah like so they were one doctor told me that like they heard about it years ago like a little more commonly but they didn't think people use it anymore which is insane because that, i mean if you're a bodybuilder you're watching this you're in tune with that shit at all like that you know that's not the case um so we're just like i'm in and out of it so your heart rate was very elevated and then they gave you the first dose waited an hour and then you didn't respond so they gave you another dose still your heart rate wasn't lowering so they gave you a third dose and that's when your blood pressure started to get dangerously low by them trying to lower your heart rate and that's when everyone wished in uh, your vitals were That I do know by that point I did not know what was going on. Like what I so my mom had driven two hours uh, north. You didn't want to tell your mom. I did not want to tell my mom. Tell your mom. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> but she had driven two hours north, um, and so she had came in the room, um, and I just I remember this is what I do remember is I remember falling asleep like literally like every thirty seconds having some insane ass, vivid ass, like, I don't even want to call it a dream because I know it's for such a short period of time, but that's what it was, a dream. Waking up, opening my eyes, and then seeing my mom, Mariah, and Tom, her husband, um, and just my like, yeah, my mom's husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just like, not knowing the severity still, and I think that was because like, I was, I knew like I was in the hospital, wasn't it? wasn't all good but like I'm just like loopy at this point <clears throat> I'm still thinking at this point that I'm going home this night which is not even close um, but yeah basically the after that after some hours hours in that room a couple hours a couple hours they moved me to the ICU I still couldn't tell you what that stands for but intensive care unit okay. um, so basically I spent two two and a half days in there and then no and you were there because of your blood pressure being so low and you were on blood pressure medication yeah so i, I was up there just because like it, it was a little bit more of a serious situation um so i was in there two days you know woke up that next morning and 
heart just started jumping. But then, like, it was much, much more calmed down from the day before. Uh, but, you know, the body aches were the worst thing. If I didn't have Ad Advil or Tylenol, I kept saying, keep saying Advil. Tylenol, every four to six hours, I could feel it wear off, and I would be, like, going through it. So I would have to tell, ask them to give me some more. Um, it was my neck mainly and my back and my legs. Uh, just from being so tense, one, from, you know, my fucking heart thinking I'm running a marathon. Two, throwing up so fucking violent. Like it was, I got, I, I farted. Like I, when we were in the first room, the before I went to the ICU, I threw up so hard I farted in front of everybody. I didn't give a fuck though, because I was out of it. Um, but spent two days in there, and let me tell you, sitting in a, sitting in a hospital bed, like, gets to you. Like, yes, I'm thankful I'm alive. I'm thankful I had like such nice people taking care of me, but. Um, but basically like just sitting in a hospital bed is one depressing and two makes your back hurt. Uh, I, I had, oh my God, I had this, they call them urinals, but these little jugs that I had to just lean over the side of my bed and pee in. Like I couldn't get up and go to the bathroom by myself. I had all these cords on me. I would be knocking them off in the middle of the night, sleep and they'd come in and put them back on me. It's just, it's just not comfortable. So, you know, as you can imagine, I'm up regretting the fuck out of it all of this um but yeah so sunday like evening they moved me to uh a less intense intensive a less in unit. yeah i was trying to transfer to a different unit she always got the right words um but it was much more chill there i could walk around my room and trust me i was walking i was pacing around just like wanting to move i was i was having trouble sleeping at night after that first night or that first day afterwards because you know i'm laying in bed all day. i'm not expending any energy so i it's, there's no reason for me to like be tired um but you know i was just ready to get out of there i went basically three days without showering felt disgusting smelled like i've never smelled before like i i, I called her and was like do you think from what was going on with my heart that like my body was releasing different hormones or something because I, I stunk but like it wasn't like a after the gym stink or like something like that like I, I smelled weird and I don't know maybe it's the medication and shit too I don't know but uh yeah so moral of the story moral of the story is your boy is not fucking with fat burners ever again so Basically, my recovery period is anywhere between six weeks and six months. Um, you know, I could talk for the length of an entire another video of how I feel about that, but like, it's that's besides the point. I have to get healthy. I'm not gonna risk my fucking life, my long and then my longevity of you know bodybuilding by recovering by just doing dumb shit like. You know, going to the gym before I'm supposed to. I need to get right first. You know, there's, there is, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I know it's true, but it's, it's, I don't think about it all the time. There is more to life than bodybuilding. Yeah, it's crazy. People keep telling me that, but like, it's kind of starting to sink in. You know, there's other, there's other shit that's important. You know, it's important, as important as this shit is to me. But, um, yeah, so, the goal right now is get healthy. Minimize as much as possible the muscle loss. You know, I that, that's I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say that's not scary. It is. I know I'm gonna lose muscle, and you know, coming back once I'm healthy again is gonna be different. I'm sure I'm gonna be 10, 20, maybe more pounds less than I'm weighing right now. Um, <laughs> he's pulling the tripod, but guys basically that's what it is um you know it, we're gonna try to make recovery as sweet and fast as possible i would love to shoot for a six week time frame but uh moral of the story is do not fuck with fat burners and if you're going to please please make sure you know the dose you are taking shit almost killed me but i'm still here i'm still making videos um That is one thing that makes me sick, but I can't dwell on because it, it's just like I didn't need it. Um, but yeah, guys, 
that's what that's what's up. That's what happened. Um, and you know, you guys can expect me to definitely talk about this more in depth. There's a lot of other avenues I could venture down talking about this shit, um, and I will in other videos. But yeah, guys, you guys already know what to do. Um, stay tuned for future videos. I'm, I'm keeping the upload schedule, keeping the consistency and content. Smash the like button. Uh, try not to hate on me too hard. You know. I have a tendency to do dumb shit, and uh, it's been a while since I did some dumb shit, so I was kind of due for it, but um, yeah.